There are things that we can't fix about disability, um, but access to books is one thing we undoubtedly can fix. So even in 2013, accessing books remains a struggle. Um, I work in my day-to-day -day life and in public health. Um, and a few months ago, I had to read a book called Reputation and Power. It's book about the Food and Drug Administration in the United, in the United States. Um, I had to search for a very long time before I could find a relatively accessible book. The version I found was a digitally locked um, EPUB that I found on cover books, which is an American online store. Um, and I could only read this with one kind of software. It was something called the Adobe Digital Editions preview for the Mac. So that was my only option to read this book. And it worked as follows. I could only read one full page at a time. So what this means is I press the button, it starts reading a page from the top. And then it's, when it's finished with the page, I press the button and it reads the next page. That's all I could do. So what does that mean? I couldn't spell words. If there was a name I wanted to quote, there was no way in which I could check the spelling of the name. If I wanted to quote a paragraph from the bottom of the page, I had to read the same page five to ten times just to reread that little paragraph at the bottom so that I can quote it. Um, another thing in this book was that it has references at the bottom, which is common with academic texts. So you'd be reading and you'd be half, you're halfway with a sentence, and then you'd start reading the references, and then when you skip to the next page, it will continue the same sentence that you were halfway reading. So I'm sure you can understand that that limits the flow to your reading, it makes it harder to follow um, complex arguments, etc. So this book was commercially available, and I'm very concerned that if we set the bar for commercial availability that low, that we're not really going to solve any, any problems. So I'm firmly of the view that we should not have commercial availability in this treaty. But if for some reason that's, that's a compromise that delegates feel we have to make, then we have to build in safeguards that would protect people like myself, and that would be things like interoperability. Um, so interoperability um, basically means the ability to read a text with um, any device or various devices and various kinds of software. In other words, in the example I explained to you, if that book was interoperable, I could just use different software to, to read it and you know my problem would be solved. So if we include commercial availability in this treaty without interoperability, my problem would not be solved. We would still be treating blind people as second class citizens. Similarly, um, we increasingly see use of audio video visual material in classrooms, um, lecture halls, online learning. And yet, in the last six months, audio visual materials have disappeared out of the treaty. Why? Why should blind people not have access to these new forms of learning? Why? Um, Honourable President, distinguished uh, delegates, this treaty has the potential to change my life, to change the lives of millions of blind people. It has the potential to dramatically expand our educational and professional prospects. But if this treaty becomes as bloated and as weakened as it's threatening to become, it will be of little or no value. And 
if that happens, if the tree becomes so weakened and unworkable, this tree will not judge us kindly. Um, if that happens, Marrakesh will not be remembered as a moment of humanity and decency, but it will be remembered for our collective failure to do what's right. Thank you very much.